Welcome to week four of the ICT course with the Arduino unit. Uh, in week three, you should have completed the Google form, which walked you back through the videos that you needed to uh, understand some of the wiring for the Arduino, which we were doing in the simulator. Uh, at the end of that Google form, you should have asked for and received a paper copy of the wiring diagram, which you can see an example of here, which you should have um, in pencil or colored pencil or felt pen colored in to indicate where the wires go to your understanding. You'll need a copy of that to be able to refer back to when you go into creating your vehicle. At the end of the Google form also was a link to a Tinkercad file that is uh, listed here as well so that you can go and get that. If you copied and tinkered it last week, uh, go back and get a, another copy because I've changed it slightly in terms of the code to make it a bit easier. So click on the link and come in and you'll find that you have a copy of the file which if you are logged in you will be able to click directly on in terms of the simulate but basically I want you to click duplicate and tinker so that you have your own copy of this file that you can modify and use as much as you like in your own account. So once you've come in you'll see that uh, we can just run the simulation and it's rotating my server through a number of different degrees for steering. It's also going to be turning the motors, one motor on, then the other motor on. Uh, it's looping through this, running them a bit slower. Then it's going to come back, turn them off, and now it's running at full speed while the servo is turning around. So let's have a quick look at this. This is what you need to be studying today. That is the code. So I have got the code done in both blocks and text. I'm going to show you both. It's quite useful for you to be able to see how the real code works together with the blocks. So when we move to the top here, we see that um, there are grey comments to explain what's going on. We're setting pin 10 and pin 4, which were the two pins here, 10 and 4, and these are used to tell the motor which direction that it's actually going to be going in. Uh, we're putting those to high, that means it's a digital pin, it's turned on. So you have two options of high and low. So those are both set high to begin with. We are also setting the analog motor pins, which is pin 11 and pin 3. These are pulse width modulation that lets us change the speed. So it's not high or low, now we can type in a value. And the values that we can put of those range from 0 to 250. It actually is 255, but stick to 250. So 0 would represent turning it off, and 250 would be going full speed and we can have a variation in between that. You'll be setting the speeds for your motors to determine um, what kind of speed that you want to be able to go depending on terrain and what motor you're working with. Uh, then our servo is on pin 9. Remember back in our wiring, pin 9 uh, came out. It's the orange one. It's the control signal for the servo to tell it to turn left and right, whereas these two are just giving it power to be able to work out what it's going to be doing. So pin 9 we're going to start off at 90 degrees and then uh, we're going to adjust the steering so we're going to spend a little bit of time at 45 degrees then back to 90 then we'll go a little bit of time at 135 degrees and back to 90 you should go and try changing those values that is how you will actually set the steering for your vehicle so uh, whatever vehicle you've got if it's moving forwards and you want to be able to turn you're going to have to adjust the steering by a certain degree for a certain length of time and then take it back to 90 degrees it's always got to reset next we have control of the motors we can turn the motors on and off so we'll turn them both off by setting the pin value to zero it's remember a pulse width modulation so we can have an analog value from zero to 255 or 250 We'll wait two seconds so we can see that. And then we're going to turn left. Well, we're turning the left motor on rather than turning left. If we turn the left motor on, that may have the function of making the vehicle turn towards the right. It just depends on how you've got your motors set up. So we're going to set one pin 11 to 200. So the left side of our um, project, this left one here, which is on pin 11, that's going to be turning. and um, the other motor will have set at zero and then we'll turn the right motor on so we're just basically switching them over and then uh, we'll turn both on slowly so we've set a value of 75 you could change the values that's something you can be doing to experiment with and then we'll turn them both motors off 
for one second and then it will go back and it will repeat this whole thing. So your job today is to come in and play with the values. Uh, do not change the pins here, that won't help you at all, um, but you can change the values in the circles here which uh, will adjust the length of time and will adjust the values of whether they are um, going at a high speed or a, a lower speed through those. And you can also be adjusting the angles of your servo motor that you can have a look at. Once you've made those adjustments or as you're making those adjustments you can run your simulation and you can see the effect of that. So at the moment you see we're running full speed there. Let's go back into my code and I'm going to change the very first one where I'm setting up my speed there. Uh, I'm going to run this one at 10 which is really slow. Probably wouldn't actually be enough to turn a real motor but it will show us as we're running the code how slowly it's going. So watch what happens now. I see it's only running at 2 revs per minute which is hardly turning over. Okay and that's 40 and 40 up there. So get into the code and try changing some of the values and then think about what kind of lengths of time you might be wanting to have any particular motor on to be able to complete the course that you're going to be working with. If you don't want to be seeing the code on the side over there, remember you can change the blocks text over here. We'll be changing the blocks text over here just to, oh sorry we have to stop simulation to do it, just to blocks and then you'll have a bit more room to see what's going on. Good luck.